right, maybe I should go live now. Three, two, one. We are live on Facebook. We are live on the webinar. We are volume is up every way around. Okay, guys, I'm going to wait till other people float in on this. And uh, today we're going to discuss mortgage protection sales inside the home. For those of you that don't understand it, will understand it in a very short period of time. So I'm going to make this short, sweet, quick, right to the point, and uh, try to get you all as much information as you can in a little bit of time that we have. So I missed Saturday because uh, I was unable to get on my either one of these computers here. So this one's live on Facebook. This one is live uh, to the webinar and the team. So I'm just going to begin. Um, mortgage protection is a life changer when it comes to the life insurance and annuity sales. It really can uh, boost your sales like no more compared to final expense. It has the ability to uh, double, triple, quadruple the premiums that you're used to earning, and it has the ability to make you a lot of money. So I don't know if anybody doesn't know what a mortgage protection lead looks like. Uh, I use this here. Ryan Ball. I think I just, uh, this one is, this is, this is the premium that we gave to this gentleman here, which was a $600 premium, which comes to a little over, I don't know, what's six times 12? It's uh, 7,200. That's a $7,200 deal there. So that one was 7,200 bucks that I sold there. And, um, it's actually a list of the made sale. And this was given to us by a purchase of a lead. So even though this cost us 47 bucks, it was still worth $7,200 as you can see. So long story short, it's well worth it. At the end of this, I'm going to teach you guys as usual how to make these mortgage sales. And uh, what's up, Medwin? How are you? John. Good. Just got my mouth full, bud. Oh, okay. Good, man. Nice to see you. Away. Got it. All right. So that's what a lead looks like anyway. So I'm going to stop wiggling this around and show you. That's the address. That's the individual owes $251,000, $363 on their mortgage. They're only 40 years of age. The guy makes a ton of money. So mathematically speaking, after I went through all of his uh, numbers and, and found out what he brings in compared to what goes out, I was able to tell him that he can afford to spend 600 bucks a month on this deal, which is uh, easily 7,200 bucks in my pocket. So that's one deal. So how do I make the mortgage protection sale go down? Well, first of all, you gotta dial the lead. So we'll go over the mortgage protection uh, script real quickly and then we'll, we'll shoot from there. Um, the mortgage protection script is pretty simple. I'm going to go based off of this again, and I'm going to know that their their lender is United Wholesale Mortgage. So I'm going to say, hey, is uh, Ryan there? Hi, Ryan. Um, I'm calling on behalf of United Wholesale Mortgage. I'm the rep that handles the area for the mortgage protection information that you re requested. I'll be in the area tomorrow at uh, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 2 p.m., 1 p.m., whatever time fits in your schedule. Run your own show. Don't let them run the show. So I set the appointment, get, in the home, get into the home. In this case, it was his office. So I actually met him at his business, uh, which happens quite often in this business too. So be aware of that. You can meet people at their office. I usually like meeting people at their home because then I can discuss, you know, what they're trying to protect, whether it be a refinance or a, uh, or a, a mortgage protection. So this particular lead was uh, you, not unusual either to me. Whenever you're able to work out the numbers, which I'll show you on this whiteboard, you're able to get more numbers out of people. So I set the appointment. Uh, yeah, Brian, I'm the guy that handles your area. I'll be in that area at 2 p.m. tomorrow. You and the missus be available at that time. Yes, no. Whatever they may say, you just move on to another time if they don't have the time that you're asking for. If they do have the time that you're asking for, great. Punch it into your 
uh, schedule and then also have them immediately put it down into their schedule. So having them put it down into their schedule is even more important than yours. So have them write it down. Hi, Ryan, can you write this down? I'm writing this down in my schedule. I'd like you to be there along with, you know, the Mrs. Jones and Mrs. Jones. Uh, you can get detailed information if you want out of them by, you know, asking them uh, health questions if you want. A lot of times I just like to set the appointment, get in the house, and make sure that, uh, that uh, I take care of all the business inside the home. So at the end of this, we get uh, a lot more numbers that way. So, and you get a lot more numbers by meaning of setting more appointments, utilizing your time to get more people on the phone. And for those of you with appointment setter, if they're not well trained enough, and you should have them coming to these webinars that I host three times a week now uh, on, on setting appointments, the in-home sales, annuity sales, final expense, mortgage protection. It, the list goes on, on on all the training that we do here. So if you're not a part of the organization yet, you can be. All you have to do is text me, join at 352-255-2594, and I'll put that. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comment box. And if you on these webinars right here know that there's a chat box down here that you guys can uh, say hi to, too. And I'll say hello to everybody real quickly, even though I spelled it wrong. Hello, everybody. And then anybody can type in there. You can even send me personal messages. All right, let's go. So once I'm in the home, boom, 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 I'm going to knock on a door. I'm going to make sure that I choose a table. The table layouts are pretty important. I know we go over this. And I'm sorry about the lighting. My light busted above me, so I had to put one of them old-fashioned lights up here. So table arrangement is you either usually have two sets of tables, this kind or the circular kind. Boom, 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 boom. Where do you want to sit? Nine times out of ten, if you're seated here, you want her here and him here or vice versa. If you're seated here, you want them two across from each other. You don't want to be turning your head back and forth across from the table. You can't manage business correctly that way. So make sure that they're not sitting across from each other. That's one aspect of this business that people fail out is by setting up the seating arrangement incorrectly. So make sure that you set the seating arrangement up correctly. If it's a square table or a, there's four seats, doesn't matter which table, you do not want them seated across from each other and you're seated here. Have them here or directly across from you. The same goes for this. Your eyesight needs to be looking them in the eyes. You do not want your head turning back and forth. You do not have your head turning back and forth. It's very important that you know that because it just throws things off. you got to keep these people bunched together as a group. That way that uh, you can use them against each other in some senses in a way where if I am sitting next to, say, I have a table like this, and here's Mrs. Jones here, here's Mr. Jones here, and I'm here. I can utilize her for this sale, meaning if he's the one doing all the talking and he's the one that has all the, all the, all the uh, information on the bills and everything like that, I'm able to ask her questions like, so, Mrs. Jones, what do you think about this? How do you feel about this? What are your ideas on this? And you want to kind of use these two against each other because they're not talking this business of mortgage protection or life insurance or annuities or retirement planning with each other. That's your job to bring that stuff out of them. So whenever you're able to do that, guys, you're able to get them in a position to make a better decision, lay out the facts to them. And just so all you are aware, I know that everybody's been asking for the sales presentation material. Jerome, I know you've asked several times. I just wanted to make sure that it was properly enhanced. So when you walked into a house that it was A to Z, you knew exactly how to do it. So I know it's been a wait, but I've been busy doing these and, and, and running the field and everything and training people. So just be patient. I'm going to get it down so it's exactly perfect. That way, when you're inside the home, you can run through these sales A to Z. And you won't have any problems there. I'm going to use this whole board. If I'm out of the way, can you guys all see this? Okay, so let's start from the sale. The in-home sale is pretty much this. You kind of have to go over what the numbers are. So if you know that the very first thing that I'll ask inside the home is I'll tell them, actually I'll tell them, look, I'm going to handle this just like you came into my office. That way it paints the picture of you, you kind of being in control of the sale. Number two, I want to know who, I want to know that they confirm 
the amount that's owed. So I know on this, it's $251,000 that they owe on this, on this particular mortgage. I also want to know, then I want to get into the numbers. I want to know, hey, Mrs. Durr and Mrs. Jones, by the way, who are the two of you own, owns the two of the higher social securities? And the reason I'm asking that is because that's what the other individual is going to be left with. So once you understand why I'm asking and they understand why I'm asking, then the sale becomes yours and you own it. And they have to listen to you guys because they're, you know, they're either going to listen to you or they're going to listen to two other people that are coming in behind you or came before you. So with mortgage protection, you never know what the placement will be. But if you're the best at it and you get the right numbers out of it, out of these people, you're able to make the sale. So do your best job and learn from failure. I failed a lot doing this. So, I mean, it wasn't just like I was come out of a womb knowing how to do this. So failure can be success. I asked the two of the higher social security numbers and due to the, the social security numbers, that gives me a balance on where they are uh, financially somewhat. So if Mr. Jones has $2,000 a month coming in to social security and Mrs. Jones has 1500 I know that she's going to receive Mr. Jones's $2,000 a month once he passes away. And that's important. Why is that important? Because she has the last six to 12 months on just $1,500 a month. So I just seen this kind of, I just seen this deal, same deal today. And it was, uh, it was the numbers were held a lot less in fact, but the, the fact is, is that it was a reverse. It was a him waiting for her numbers, but we'll use this, this analogy here. Mr. Jones has $2,000 in social security. Mrs. Jones has 1500 coming in. Now we know what they both earn monthly. So we know what they're bringing in. All we have to find out now is what's going out. So we have $3,500 a month coming in. We know that she has to wait six, worst case scenario, 12 months. So this woman has to survive on $1,500 a month while he's no longer in the picture. You see, while they're alive, everything looks okay. They got 3,500 bucks a month coming in. But while one of them is gone, the income slashed in half. So what our job is to do is to find out what would happen if the other individual passed away. So if Mr. Jones is no longer here, Mrs. Jones has to survive on 1500 bucks. Now all you have to do is use my, use the paperwork that I do have that I will get out to everybody. All you have to do is ask. And I, I got it. I had to revamp it though. So I know the people have asked, I have you on my schedule to get it over to you and I will. But what you're going to do now is just go through the mortgage or the, the expenditure. So meaning the bills, uh, the bills very simply are, well, we know that there's a mortgage bill, so that's one. Mortgage bill today was $1,000 a month. All right? So we know automatically it's like half of their money. So now what are they down to? They're down to $2,500. You got the light bill. You got the uh, or electric bill. You got gas. Up north in the northern plains, they got gas. They have uh, gas in the car. You got the car bill. You got the car note. You got the car insurance. You got the kids in some cases. The list goes on, and that's what the list is about. So let's say at the end of this, in the scenario that I've seen today, that they were at, what the hell were they at? It was, they had a 1000 bucks left over. So under these circumstances, they would be spending about $2,500 a month is going out, and they have a $1,000 left over. The question you have to ask is, what are you doing with that extra thousand bucks? What, where's it going? How well, how do you spend that? Because even in my layout, I give them extra money to spend a month. I usually try to give people anywhere from fifty to one hundred bucks just to blow uh, each each the husband and wife. Nine times out of ten, I try to tell you that they don't blow that uh, on coffee, cigarettes, whatever it may be. But, you know, most people, as you can tell yourself, you blow at least 100 bucks a month, right? If, if, would you disagree with me? I mean, I think that we all blow at least 100 bucks a month. The uh, reason I bring that up is because that's numbers that are extra. What do they spend money on extra? They spend it on eating out. Eating out's a big one to put on here. That person today spends $400 a month on just eating out. So I add that up with that, that's 600 bucks a month, plus the thousand that they got left over. So there's actually about $1,600 a month left over. If they didn't eat out, give them a break. They gotta live life a little bit, so we'll give them some money. 
What are your, what's your job to use out of this money? You're supposed to, let me go back up to the top here. You use whatever the numbers are necessary to use. I think a lot of you are afraid to give out big numbers. And there has to be a reason, though. You have to make them understand what they're purchasing. It has to be uh, a, a product. Like if you're buying a new car, you buy it because of the color. You buy it because of the engine. You buy it because of the interior. You have to let them know what the interior, how this motor runs. You got to let them know how fast the car is. You got to let them know how quickly it runs, how quick it breaks. So with, with mortgage protection or life insurance, what you want to make sure is that you're always explaining the product to along the journey of finding out these numbers, okay? Now, before you go into some of these homes, you can, you can find out the numbers necessary if you know their age, whether they're a non-smoker, and if you've asked certain health questions over the, over the phone before getting into the home. So if they have 1,600 bucks left over a month, I know that I can use 300 to $600 of that and still leave them with $1,000. But remember, this was eating out. Uh, this was other expenditures that's in their, in their budget that you're used to. So what you really want to use is this $1,000. So out of that 1000 again, we're leaving 300 to $600 a month. And then what I do is I ask them, listen, out of the money that you spend every month, could you learn to live on after all your bills are paid? Would it be okay? Could you survive all your bills are paid? Can you survive on having an extra $700 a month left over and falling asleep tonight knowing that your home's protected? Could you absolutely have no reason on earth not to get you any Z's? Your home will be paid off. You and Mrs. Jones fall asleep tonight. Mr. Jones doesn't wake up. The house is completely paid off for her, whether she's whether whether it be death or you got to remember these mortgage protection policies and a lot of products that we have out there are due to illness or injury too. So that's that's kind of a neat uh, neat neat enhancement that you need to enforce while you're in the home. So you need to be have product knowledge is very 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 important. So we have three hundred to six hundred dollars in premium that you can use to put this policy together. And that, my friends, is about the simplest way I can put this sale together. Now, what I'd like to do is that what I always do is I just open it up to questions. Like I said, if you guys have any questions or you're running into anything, please ask me along the journey. Here. I'm sorry, if you guys hear this fax machine go off, it might just go off right now. Anyway, we have this money left over, okay? So I'm gonna write this up. I'm gonna find out what these premiums yield. $300 due to a bad health situation could be, it could be horrifying to them. I mean, it could be low numbers, but in this case, $300 was able to get them $100,000 in coverage. Sorry about the facts, guys. $300 gets them $100,000 in coverage. Now, this case here was a little different. This is $251,000 we're trying to cover, so this is $600 a month, which yields me $7,200 of that. Because you know how we get paid. If you don't, then I'll have to inform you how we get paid here. But this 125000 they actually owed 125000 I told them, listen, you can afford to take some time out of your life to pay some of the mortgage off, only owe 100000 subtract 25000 off, you pay that. Five years, you'll have 25000 paid off. Mr. Jones, in any way, shape, or form, do you feel like you're going to die in the next five years? And the guy usually says no. He laughs it off, you know. I got 20 years coming to me. They could be 80 years old today, and they always got 20 years coming to me. 70 years old, they got 20 years coming to me, okay? And I, I hope to God they do. But in that time, if they don't, one, you cover the hell out of the mortgage, and number two, they have cash value building up. For all the people that are young out there and don't have any investment plans, these products are used, I use it for an investment portfolio too. There's seven to 12 and a half percent interest on these products, guys. If you're not investing in the life insurance or some special form of life insurance, you need to start right now. Don't worry about the 401k market or 403bs out there and all the stock. You know, if you got money to play in the stock market, please go right ahead and do it and find a good broker that can work the numbers for you. But if you don't have any real numbers and you just got 100 to 200 bucks extra a month, even 50 bucks then you should be investing in the life insurance in some format. Even you guys as reps, there's other ways to make money for your future other than just selling this stuff. You can invest into this stuff and you get paid as earned to do so. So just think about 
uh, investing into your own uh, into your own products. So final expense isn't too much different. I mean, it's basically the same format. You just take the numbers from the beginning and you subtract what's left over and you get the number that, that they can use or afford to use. So whenever you're doing final expense, it's a little lower numbers. I mean, you're really coming there to spend, uh, people are only expecting uh, 10,000, maybe 20,000, 30,000. And if you're able to get them a hell of a lot more because you know your products, then so be it to do so. You know, that's your job. So you're always going for the smallest number, the small number, for the largest number. So everybody always wants $100,000 in coverage or even more. So just show them why it's important to have $25,000 or $10,000. Why? Because somebody's going to be left with that bill. And I know that they, do you want to leave a bill behind? I mean, are you that bad that you want to leave a bill behind because of 25 to a hundred dollars a month to your family? You know, really honestly think about it. It's, and, and it's building cash value. So the benefits of you investing into these products is the cash value portion of it. So whenever you pay your premiums into life insurance, it builds cash value for later on. If some of these cash buckets I run into which is another strategy that you need to learn is finding the life insurance products that they already existingly have and taking them off the table. The one guy today that I seen, uh, he has, um, uh, what do you have? He had two products, both of which he took loans from. They're going to die out, cripple themselves because of the loans on them. And he had $10,000 in cash value built up into them. And that's after the fact they already took loans from them. So I was able to get him the cash value out and start him into new products. And that's a great strategy there to use, guys. Great strategy to use. I hope to God I'm recording this. Okay. So one of the benefits to life insurance is it builds cash value. You can use that against the individuals, meaning that you, if they can't, you can't make a sale for any other reason, use the cash value. What do I use cash values for, too? Very important that I use the cash values to... Uh, annuitize money. So I will take that $10,000 from that gentleman and I will turn that into a new life insurance product. This will become called an indexed annuity. So guess what? While majority of life reps are out there making one sale or struggling just to make one sale inside the home, they're looking for the $50 premiums. I'm not only doubling or tripling or quadrupling the amount of premium that I get out of people doing it this way, I'm also finding extra sales to make money off. So if I sell this deal right here, that could, that's an extra thousand bucks, to be honest with you, or close to it anyway. So that's what kind of deals you want to walk away with per home. So think about it. If you're able to increase the amount of premium that you pull out of each individual home, not only are you helping the individual do the right thing by themselves and think about their money better, but you're also doing the right thing by your own self. And you can pull a hell of a lot more money out of people by doing the right thing, actually. You're not even trying, you're not, it's not a scam. You're not wheeling and dealing and, and scamming people. You're actually doing the right thing by these individuals. So very, very important, guys. Um, has anybody been in the field lately? Is uh, How about uh, Jeremy? You've been in the field this week, bud? Right? Or last week, I'm sorry, last week? Yeah, brother. I was out in the field last week. And did, did you tell me you found a, a, a product today that you could annuitize? Uh, yeah, so um, I was on a Tuesday uh, on a $200,000 403B. Okay. Um, yeah, I was uh, 60 years old. And that's a 403B. So he found a 403B, which is uh, just, it's usually a state-based, government-based product. Usually school teachers and nurses have these kind of uh, products. But what he can do now is do an illustration. So all he has to do now is present an illustration. And why do he present an illustration? I'll tell you why. Is because the illustrations prove everything. They do a 20-year look back on what the money would have done compared to what the market does do. And the market is called volatile all the time. I mean, it's constantly... It, it, it can be volatile at any moment. So I just call it volatile all the time because it can be volatile at any moment. With an indexing strategy, you have no more volatility to the product. You never lose. 
You might not participate in the upsides that some people participate in the market-based products, but I never see anybody really earning more than, I don't know, 5 6% anyway. I mean, at the max, and most of them are earning 3% if you average it all out along the board. So how do you get the annuity sales? You pull them out of the life sales. You really do. You, 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 you pull them out of the life sales um, from, uh, from, from, I guess, just researching the numbers. I mean, it really just, just comes down to that. Yeah, you got to ask the right questions. I mean, I walk into this house, this gal, she's in a wheelchair. Um, doesn't look like she has money, but... Uh... Sure enough, she had some stuff. Oh, yeah, he made a good point. Uh, a lot of these people don't even, you don't even realize it. I, I find they don't want to work with it, but they, they're so scared of the market that they'd rather leave $600,000 in a savings account than put it anywhere else that's even safer than the savings account. So I got to call these people again and just get them, you know, strategize better because it's just hurting them not to be able to double. Imagine these people. Every 10 years, the proof of the pudding is in the, in the past 20 years, if they were doing this strategy, this very strategy that we're trying to teach, that they would have doubled their numbers every 10 years. That's 1.2 million and then 2.4 million. I mean, is that sick not to do? I mean, it just doesn't sound right. And they don't need the money. They earn over $10,000 a month. So the 600000 that he pulled out of the market just sits in an account. The guy was a millionaire before he lost 50% due to market volatility. So... You know, he just went almost about 21 and almost got a real estate license back, but backed out. Oh, well, you know what? You got to get a life insurance license, Scott. You know, that's what it is, mortgage protection and life insurance, buddy. But at the end of the day, uh, J Jeremy, good job finding the money. You found it. And that's the first step, finding the money. Got to research these people and find out what they have. And that's the other question that comes right. I, I kind of skipped over that in the presentation, but when, after you ask about um, social security, if you're gonna ask, hey, out of the two of you, who has the two of the higher social security numbers, then you would wanna go into, um, by the way, would Mrs. Jones be left with any uh, pension or any retirement fund, like a 401k or a 403b, Mr. Jones, that would be left behind? And then, you know, is the VA leave it or anything and things like that, are you a veteran? And find out the true numbers. So. That always pulls the numbers out right at the beginning of the sale. So right from the beginning, you're asking, who has the two of the higher social securities? And then at, at one point, at right after that, once you figure that out, and let them know the reason you're asking. If you start prying into people's numbers, you're going to get negative responses, and you don't want that. So if, you know why, if they know why you're asking, the reason being is because Mrs. Jones is going to be left with the two of the higher. You always want to let them know the downside is, is it takes six to 12 months for her to receive that. Now that's a point in your sale that you can make valid because that's going to be the point where they're thinking about, oh my God, I didn't realize that. And a lot of people don't even know that. They think it's just a quick switch and it's not that way. So if they don't have money to fund that simple area, then they don't have the, the time that is necessary. They could lose the home. They could you know, the bills could go out the ass and then it can fail horribly uh, due to the fact that they don't have enough money just to buy her time to get through that 12 months. So if worst case scenario, when you're selling these products, make sure that you have the ability to buy them time, buy Mrs. Jones a year of time. And what does she need? Well, just usually factor in one to $2,000 a month. Whatever he's not bringing in anymore is what you can factor in. And then there'll be a, there, there'll be more room for, um, for, uh, for more sales there too. But on top of that, you're going to ask, you know, what's the, the, the pension, the 401k. Once you find out that there's a 401k, there's another strategy that I use. If you're unable to pull the numbers out of these individuals because they don't want to pay, they don't want to spend, uh, spend the money, then what you can do is you can use the index products, the index annuities to pay for this. So if you find out that they have a 401k, how's that performing? Have you been have you been wise to it? Are you are you knowledgeable on how it's performing, truly performing? Are you aware that there's costs and fees to that? And if you can get them to say yes to these questions that you're asking, you can ultimately do an illustration right in the home. For those of you that have a laptop, it's very simple to do an illustration. You can contact the carrier and get them to do it, an illustration for you. You can um, 
you can possibly do an illustration online using the web portals that they have too and punch in some numbers. But most of the time, just call the carrier up, tell them, Mrs. Jones and Mr. Jones, hold on one second. I just want to, I want you to have all the information. So if you, God forbid, you have somebody else coming behind me that they don't lead you in the wrong direction, you know everything that you should right now. And if you're making decisions today, great. If you don't, then at least you know all the material is here. So get on the phone, get the carrier, ask them for one second, tell her to go get you a cup of coffee, make them work, do the job right, and buy some time. Get them to tell you about their products, and you will make more money, I promise you. So, Jeremy, good job on finding that money, by the way. And I don't want to hold people on there too long. I just wanted people to, uh, if you only need an insurance other than variable products, uh, most annuities you only need an insurance. Yeah, that's right. Other than variable products, that's correct, uh, Brian. That's right. So, yeah, and and that's right. You need a life insurance license uh, to sell index products. The uh, series six and sevens are for the variable products, which won't. Well, you shouldn't have a problem with selling just index products and making money. If this is about a career, guys, then trust me, you can make a lot of money. You do a quarter of a million dollars a year. You know, if you do it right without any sweat, uh, of course, you're going to put some time in. But I mean, it doesn't have to be rocket science to you if you just learn the products. And even if you have a regular job out there, I tell people, go out at nighttime. You're going to have to make sacrifices to make some money these days. Go into sacrificing your time is one of the things you do. But if you schedule your time properly, there's plenty of time. You think all the millionaires out there and billionaires out there don't have the same amount of time as you, you're wrong. You do. So find the time, make it happen. The final expense sale, pretty much the same. You go over it, you review it, you find out what's coming in compared to about what's going out, and then you can make a decision based on that. Um, very simply put, you have, uh, you, have, you have plenty of time in the home, so don't ever rush yourself. You got great people that just want, they want knowledge. Some people, like last week, were very extremely wealthy. They didn't like the fact that I was asking them too many questions about their personal. Woman kept saying, why are you asking these questions? Why are you asking these questions? And the reason is, is because I'm trying to help you. That's why I'm asking these questions. So make sure they understand why you're there. Why, why are you asking these questions? And before you ask it, give them a definition on why. So even if you're going to about to ask for social security, I say, hey, look, uh, who are the two who has the higher the two social securities? Well, the reason I'm asking is because that's what the other individual is going to be left with. And that helps me calculate a number. Some people just want to get to the price and they have no idea why they're purchasing this stuff. So you have to be very, 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 very clear on why you're asking these particular questions whenever you're selling mortgage protection life insurance, and indexed annuities, okay? And indexed universal lives are very popular too. I, we, we do more of those than anybody I know, really. 99% uh, of my product sales are through that, and that's just important. If you can learn those products, they have huge cash values, huge potentials, and they can make a lot of money as long as you know how they work. You have to properly fund them and make sure your client uh, knows that the, that's part of the game too. Uh, regular final expense life insurance, guys. When I started, I mean, I started many companies uh, that you just try to find the smallest number back in the day, but now you got to find larger numbers or you're going to fail the person. So, you know, make sure it's a valid, valid effort on your behalf to find the person, the actual number that they need. What is the actual number that they need? One, it is to cover time. Cover time. What is time? Time means you're covering the amount of time that the other significant other's income is no longer there. Okay? That's one top rule. Cover the time of the income that is no longer there. That is a policy sold. Number two, cover the debt. If it's mortgage protection, then you're going to have a policy that you have uh, you need a big number too. If it's just final expense, you're, you're covering 20,000, uh, 30,000, 40,000 bucks. And if it's mortgage protection, you're covering 25,000 all the way to, to half a million bucks. So make sure you cover the numbers, okay? Number three, investment. 
make sure that it is a valid investment for them and they understand it. You know what I did the other day? I actually got a woman to buy a policy for money that she's spending, but I have her annuity money funding the new policy. So Jeremy, in your situation, if they're looking for to buy life insurance, the the ten percent that's allowed every year out of the annuity can fund the life insurance. They can actually get life insurance for free out of this deal. So that's another key that you can use inside the home is getting the index products annuities, the four hundred three bs, the four hundred one ks, to fund the life insurance or mortgage protection products for absolutely nothing, along with leading, leading them on to know that final expense life insurance and mortgage protection products, not the term stuff, the whole life, index universal life products, all come with interest. So like a savings account, it grows and compounds as interest. Okay? So it's very important stuff. Uh, does anybody have anything to add? Does anybody want to say anything? Any questions? Questions usually help, you know, if you're learning, I would think, right? So if there's anything that you guys need to know or, or, or want to share, let me know. Um, Jeremy, you have any appointments this week? Um, I have, uh, I'm on my way, I have two tonight, just kind of random. And then uh, somebody booking out Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, good. And uh, you're not sure what you're walking into yet? I'm sure. Uh, well, well, I'm, uh, I'm, deli I'm delivering a policy and a $400,000 annuity illustration. Uh, you are delivering that? Yep. Well, I'm oh. delivering it. We're going to talk to talk to her about it and uh, go from there. Okay, great. So that illustration, hopefully, did you use a theme or who'd you use? Yep, use a theme. Okay, great. So as you can see, you're going to show them the non-guaranteed portion. Right. The guaranteed portion just means if the market was to dive tomorrow, that that's how much they'd be left with. But the non-guaranteed is the 20-year look back. So there's an illustration in there that's going to show you at least a 10 year look back and show them exactly what their numbers would do in the past 10 years. And that's what that illustration is based upon, which is good. So that's great for you. Uh, at the end of this thing, man, uh, good luck on that annuity sale because that's, uh, that's a lot of money you can earn on that deal. And that's fantastic for you. Uh, so Jeremy is just like, you know, he's just learning how to do this, but he's out there. He's now asking for these numbers guys. And for those of you that aren't inside the home, you can't ask. So your first step to this entire business is making sure that you have lead resources. Most of the you need an insurance. I already read that. So you need to get lead resources. Order your leads on a regular basis. Make sure that they continue to flow in day in, day out. Make sure that they never, ever stop. If you're in a coma, if you're hospitalized, I, I don't know, worst case scenario, just make sure your lead flow continues. It's very important to invest into your business. How, how the hell are you gonna own any business if you don't invest back into it? I know it's difficult when you're getting started, but when you're getting started, one of the strategies that I use was asking my upline for leads. Another strategy is getting referrals. I mean, very simply asking for referrals is one of the most popular ways to start a business and then do, be street smart. Get your business cards into the hands of people and let people you never thought would think about doing this with you, let them know about you. Let them contact you. Tell them the things you do. Look, when I owned a health club and we owned the personal training businesses, I talked to everybody. I let them know, here's a free personal training session. Here's a free personal training session. Here's a free personal training session. For you, here's a free consulting session. Here's a free consulting session with me and we can go over your finances. We can go over your life insurance. We can make sure that you're protected well. Please give me a call. Here's my website on there. If you guys don't have a website, you can create your own websites. WIX.com allows you to create your own free website. It's not that expensive these days to have a website too, by the way. So it's a smart investment for everybody. If you don't have leads, you have to create the way. If you've been given leads, maximize the scenario with those leads and dial the hell out of them. Use the time. Don't be afraid of these people. They ask to be, they ask to be contacted is what they ask to be. So if you're, if you're not contacting them on a, on a thorough basis, then you're not doing the job correctly. Um, if anybody has any 
anything to add. Uh, that's about it for me tonight. I just wanted to make up for Saturday morning. I missed that session and I felt bad about it. My computers wouldn't work. I couldn't get anything to work, but uh, I know somebody took over for me, which was cool. So um, I know it's not like me, guys, right? But uh, it worked out, I hope. But any questions? Real quick. What's up, bro? I wanted to add real quick at this, uh, this, this one delivery, it was a $3 lead and I door knocked it. So ah. $130 a month policy. And now. Now we're working on this so it's he gains out of this. It's hundred and thirty dollars a month. One thirty times twelve months equals how much is that? So zero. Uh, how much is your total? Uh, I think total roughly like a hundred, uh, sixteen hundred. Roughly. Yeah. It's oh shit. It's uh, 1560. Yeah. Yeah. So he makes $1,560 on a $3 lead that he couldn't get a hold of, so he went to the door on. Uh, that's pretty yeah. impressive. Plus, he's delivering the opportunity for a $400,000 annuity sale, which may pay him 5 to 10%. I'm not even sure, but it's going to be twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars dollars $40,000 in the kid's pocket. It could turn into a very, very, very nice Christmas for him. So I wish you the best. All my prayers to that situation. Hopefully they do the right thing because it is a 403B. Uh, this one's a 401K for this one. 401K, okay. Okay to the K, but not okay. Yes, sir. How about contracting? Uh, need uh, National Life Group and some whole life companies. Okay, got it. We're going to get you there with uh, about this. I'm all, I'm taking tomorrow. I'm sitting in, like here with you guys. It's going to be tomorrow. I didn't set the time for it, but I'm going to speak to everybody on this, and I'm going to make sure that it's done tomorrow. I'm making a decision, and I think it's the best decision I can make because of the time lapse, the time it's taking. I can always do something else into the future, but for now, I think that I have to make a decision for everybody that's losing money, and I have to do it wisely. So tomorrow, I'll be back on here with you guys and the team to discuss everything that you need and make sure that you get it, John. Is that at 6 o'clock, too? No, I was going to do that one actually earlier, bud. Um, okay. What's that? I have a 7 o'clock. Somebody at 7 or something like that, she said. I got this kid who wants to talk to us. But anyway – uh, I don't know. I was thinking about maybe like noon or something like that. I don't know if it works, but. That's good for me. Yeah, that would work. Okay. Now get it out of the way at 12 o'clock noon. If that's all, uh, is anybody have any questions? Anybody else? Anybody on Facebook? Anything at all? Anything pertaining to life, annuity, no health? Please. So I guess everybody's going to write 10,000 bucks this week, except for John Medwin, because he has an excuse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, all right, guys, if that's it, I will see you all tomorrow. I'm going to talk about uh, the business itself, um, growth. I'm going to talk about contract levels. I'm going to talk about the business, and this will pertain only to sales reps themselves. So if you want to become a sales rep for this company and my organization, like I said, you can text me at uh, text me at uh, 352-255-2594 and text me join. All right, guys, that's it for tonight. Thank you very much all for your time. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Same bat place, same bat time. Thanks, Jake.